In the name of God and prayers and peace be upon the messenger of God. We talked about the types of the human soul and we stopped at the words of God Almighty. And I do not claim to be innocent. The soul commands to evil except those on whom my Lord has mercy. My Lord is forgiving and merciful. It is the confession of the ruler's wife that she, her soul, tempted to do evil. And scholars said that the soul that leads to do evil is the vehicle of Satan and that it needs resistance and deterrence through repentance, seeking forgiveness and rejecting its inclinations for evil. It seems that the ruler's wife returned to work on the advice of her husband when he said to her, and you woman ask forgiveness for your sin you are indeed in the wrong. God is forgiving to whoever asks for his forgiveness and repents to him for sin and merciful to whoever seeks his mercy. It seems that the ruler's wife sincerely repented and changed the course of her life. In general, matters are evaluated by conclusions and outcomes. There are sinners who commit sins and immoral acts then they repent to God and he accepts their repentance. This verse gives us hope and that God can forgive us previous sins if we sincerely repent to him. Here the curtain falls on an important chapter in the life of Joseph, peace be upon him, which is the chapter of tribulation and multiple harsh tests, starting from the well to selling to the temptation of the ruler's wife and the rest of the women and then prison. We have finished the verses that include the affliction law. Let us begin with the verses that include the law of empowerment. It is the will of God to empower Joseph, peace be upon him, after his success in overcoming past tests with steadfastness and certainty. The king gathered several proofs of Joseph's unique, honest, and pure personality and he loved this oppressed, patient, knowledgeable, and prudent person. So he called for him to come, as appears in the following verse. And the king said, Bring him to me, and I will keep him for myself. Then when he spoke to him, he said, As of today, you are with us established and secure. The king wanted to place Joseph close to him, so that he could always benefit from his advice and sound opinion. So he summoned him to speak to him, and Joseph was loved by everyone who saw him. This is the case with righteous people and messengers, to whom sincerity and benevolence give light and attraction that make them acceptable to people. Joseph had an interview with the king, which in our general knowledge is considered a job interview in which the job candidate sends his CV, and if he meets the criteria, they summon him for the interview. The Holy Quran conveys to us the news of the interesting dialogue between Joseph and the king, and leaves us to imagine how Joseph, peace be upon him, influenced the king with his clear mind and high culture, until the king said to him, as of today, you are with us, established and secure i.e. protected, and no human being can attain him, and trustworthy in state secrets area. The king took the decision to include Yusef in the ruling elite without consulting anyone. Rather, he evaluated him himself and decided to make him a confidant in order to seek his help in governance and decision-making matters. Here, Joseph, peace be upon him, chose the field in which he mastered, which is what concerns Egypt at the present time, 
as appears in the following verse. He said, put me in charge of the storehouses of the land. I am honest and knowledgeable, i.e. he is aware of what enters the warehouses and what comes out of them and is aware of how resources are stored and distributed to people. These experiences were previously learned by Joseph during the time of Al-Hakim, and the Al-Hakim's prophecy occurred when he said to his wife, take good care of him, he may be useful to us, or we may adopt him as a son. Indeed, God benefited all of Egypt by Joseph and even the peoples around it. Il <laughs>